Gas Metal Arc Welding, GMAW, Part 1. Learning objectives for this um, presentation. What you will hopefully learn from this course is basic information about welding processes, advantages and disadvantages. When is it a good idea to use this process, when is it not? Um, hopefully you'll learn some basic welding terminology, pick up a few of the buzzwords so that you can, you might not be able to speak the language of the welding people, but maybe you can get somewhat fluent in their language or be able to speak in a form of pidgin so that, you know, that it eases the communication difficulties between those people designing the welds and those people making the welds. Um, hopefully you'll have a greater understanding of gas metal arc welding equipment. Um, the four gas metal arc welding transfer modes. Uh, hopefully you'll pick up a little bit of information about the shielding gases. I kind of went on a, I kind of go on a rant or a, down a rabbit hole on shielding gases and I would, didn't really mean to but I got down that direction and thought ah, it kind of fits so it's going to stay. And the advantages and disadvantages of gas metal arc welding. Like anything in life there's advantages and disadvantages to this um, welding process. So hopefully this will open your eyes and uh, in, in regards to gas metal arc welding and other welding processes and uh, maybe make some sense for you. What you won't learn from this course is how to weld. That's not my intention. My intention is to help non-welding technical people, engineer type people or other technical individuals maybe learn a little of the lingo and some of the process terminology involved with welding processes. So the following is a list of factors affecting weld process selection. This is thrown in here you know to to give you an idea of things that you need to think of when you need to get something welded. Nothing will make a welding person crazier than just saying just weld it. Well, what do we need to what criteria do we need to meet? You know, it's it's like saying telling somebody, "Hey, just go to Texas." Well, where in Texas? El Paso, Beaumont, Dallas, Brownsville, come on, give me a region at least. Give me a little bit closer. So that's what these this list here is doing. You know, the type of base metal we're going to weld, the metal thickness, the groove design, the joint alignment, the skill level of the welder, the welding position, the rate of the weld deposit, depth of penetration, impact strength and mechanical properties, you know, corrosion resistance. Welding position is big because, you know, what are we welding? Are we welding on something that's the size of a house or are we welding on something that's the size of a pizza box? So that's one of the biggies there. Um, the type of base metal and the thicknesses, that's going to help drive what process we're going to use too. If we're, you know, if it's something the size of a pizza box, we're probably not going to use submerged dark welding. If it's something the size of a house and we're building a haul truck box or just some massive structure, we're probably going to use stick and flux core and we're probably not going to use a lot of gas tungsten arc welding. So these are all considerations that need to be kept in mind when we're selecting a weld process. Gas metal arc welding. This is a definition. Gas metal arc welding is an arc welding process in which the heat for welding is developed between a continuously fed consumable metal electrode and the workpiece. As the metal electrode is fused by the welding arc, it becomes the filler metal for the weld deposit. Protection from atmospheric contamination, mainly oxygen and nitrogen, of the electrode, the metal in transit, and the electrode to the weld puddle the weld puddle and the adjacent heated areas is achieved by a shielding gas or a mixture of gases that flows from inside the nozzle to the electrode holder. GMAW is considered as a semi-automatic process when the electrode wire feed rate is the only mechanically controlled feature of the process. Malip manipulation of the electrode wire holder slash gun is completely controlled by the operator. Machine welding with GMAW is a mechanized process, but one or more controls require attention and adjustment by the operator. 
Automatic GMAW involves fully mechanized equipment, such as robots, that require a minimum amount of observation and adjustment by the operator. However, uh, most of the information we're going to cover in this is going to be restricted to the semi-automatic process. Okay, here you can see the gas metal arc welding process. Um, just a general schematic. You can see on the far right we've got the th with numbers 24, 25, and 26. We've got the compressed gas bottles. Um, number 20, you can see a power supply. And then on the far left-hand side, you can see a, a blown, none of this is to scale, but you can see a, a blown-up weld gun. You can see the electrode, the filler metal electrode coming out the end of the gun. You've got the diffuser. Um, number 12 shows you the spool of wire. Number 22 shows you the gas mixer. Um, the three most common gases for gas metal arc welding are argon, carbon dioxide, and helium. So depending on what metal you're welding and what mechanical properties you want to get out of the weld metal, and there's a whole litany of uh, variables that go into gas choices. So these are, these are just some. And then there's all kinds of mixtures. You can see there's a gas mixer. Um, item number 22 so you can mix these in various combinations forms whatever so on this one um, you can see the various components of the gas metal arc welding I guess system um, well, if we start in top dead center you can see the cylinder and the flow meter this is where your shielding gases come from and then we'll you see the wire feeder and the wire spool um, the gun cable, the welding gun. The welding gun is, you know, where the wire is gonna, the wire and the gas are gonna come out of. Um, ground clamp that helps complete the circuit back to the power supply. The power supply is hooked into the um, wire feeder. So, but yeah, this is a basic setup. I mean, it's it's um, not overly complicated. It, in the real world, generally, if you have problems, or uh, in my experiences, it's going to come with the gun or the wire feeder. You're going to you can have all kinds of problems with wire feeders and guns and things not talking back and forth to each other, or the liner and the guns getting messed up. But, anyways, try not to turn this into a dissertation on uh, um, troubleshooting the gas metal arc welding system. Here's a, another variant. Um, instead of having a separate power supply and wire feeder here, everything is in one package. Um, you can get these packages at a relatively reasonable price. Um, generally, they aren't, uh, for the most part, they aren't super heavy duty. I mean, just really puke the metal to it. Um, but if you're doing a moderate amount of welding, a lot of these systems such as this one will do most everything you need to do. They have some really good packages out there from various manufacturers. So um, you have a couple of different ways to go when you're buying a gas metal arc welding system. Okay, the gas metal arc welding gun is very crucial to this system, or process, I should say. Um, its function is to deliver the shielding gas and wire and the welding current to the weld pool, which is making the weld, your liquid weld metal. Um, MIG guns are rated on amperage and capacity. The reason is heat. Um, anything over about 400 amps, you gotta water cool it because you will burn the gun up. Um, and plus, if you go from a, a, a air-cooled gun to a water-cooled gun, you're gonna get smaller. So f welder fatigue can be decreased. They have some really good, um, there's some manufacturers out there that make some really good weld guns that are can take a pretty good beating um, as far as, uh, you know, wa being water-cooled. Um, previous companies I've worked for, there's, they had some uh, water-cooled welding guns and they could just flat lay down the weld metal, um, really, really run, get some 06, 062 wire and just really crank up the the voltage and go so water-cooled guns are a direction you can go um, 
uh, here on the you can see the gun and cutaway you can see the cable the insulation ring the gas diffuser the gas diffuser is the gas comes down a tube and then the gas diffuser obviously diffuses it breaks it into a decent flow so then it covers the end of the wire um, you can see the contact tube that's what conducts the electricity to the wire um, and as I said the welding wire is delivered to the gun by the liner the liner must be sized to the welding wire um, this can lead to a lot of liners lead to a lot of problems um, you're if you're gonna do any amount of MIG welding you're gonna have to you'll figure all this out and figure out gun maintenance and how to repair them and take care of them um, welding wire is delivered to the gun by the liner like I said the liner must be sized to the welding wire a small liner if you have too small of a liner you'll get excessive friction which may cause the wire to seize so then it's going to burn back in and burn up your tip if you have too large of a liner the wire the wire can buckle and spring forward and cause erratic wire feeds um, the liner must be the correct length too so if you're going to be doing any appreciable amount of gas metal arc welding you will figure this out um, and you always have a couple of extra liners in your storeroom because something's going to go wrong with the GMAW system so but it's it's all part of doing business but you also will uh, I think make this up I don't have empirical evidence to back it up but if the situation's right and you're using gas metal arc welding to make welds it's going to be significantly faster than using shielded metal arc welding shielded metal arc welding you don't have to worry about liners and tips and all this but it's a much slower method to deposit weld metal into a groove so just things to think about summary in this module we just covered the basic information about the GMAW welding process um, some basic welding terminology in regards to GMAW and basic GMAW equipment you know the guns and the power supplies and materials or uh, equipment like that that makes this process go